folks, Ariel over here at Finest. I just want to do real quick here a look at kind of some of how I add nutrients back into my soil here in the garden. Obviously, if I'm going to eat vegetables out of here for part of the year, those plants are taking things out. If I want to keep doing that repeatedly, I need to give it something back so it can continue to produce good food for me. It is, uh, looks probably somewhat sunny, um, mostly shady in my clearing by this time of year since I'm on the north side of a hill, but it's actually pretty cold. Um, well, this morning it was fairly warm. There's still frost on that, but the ground is now frozen hard. You can probably hear it tapping. I did get my garlic planted in this bed yesterday. Um, good thing I didn't wait any longer because I was already punching through the, the soil was frozen for about the top inch. Um, now I think it's frozen further and while it's sunny and a little bit warm today uh, we've only got about one more day before we've got lows forecast. It's been in the teens every night but we've got lows down to like 3 Fahrenheit so that would be what 29 degrees below freezing. Um, so I don't think the ground is going to, to thaw anymore this year, certainly not in my uh, clearing here. So this, I'm trying to get everything wrapped up that is, is not done um, before that happens. So what you can see probably here on this side is I have added some horse manure on top. I have added different things uh, on different years depending what I have had access to at the time. Um, there's somebody who has some horses not too far from here and they're willing to share some of their manure so I've got a few buckets of that. Um, this has been partially broken down or composted already through the summer. It's not fresh, it's not completely broken down yet either. It's still kind of got the, the pellets there and so I'm just using my hands here to kind of crumble them up and spread just a little bit of that across the surface. Other things I have added, depending what I have around, are sawdust, not actual wood chips. I do use the wood chips here at the pathways. I know some people have great success with growing things in wood chips. I, uh, not saying they're lying, I'm just uh, assuming they live in <laughs> warmer and moister climates because here, wood chips you put down where you want nothing to grow because nothing comes through it for many, many years. Eventually, of course, it does break down and make great soil, but these chips are probably five or six years old at this point and they uh, aren't anywhere close to being a good growing medium yet. But I have done sawdust, um, various kinds of manure, uh, leaves, There's that's really hard to get here, that's a great one actually, but it's, it's, there's not many <laughs> trees with leaves on them around here. Um, there's one landscaping service in the area that sometimes they do rake leaves from a few folks who have yards with a lot of aspens in and, uh, and uh, I can use some of their leaf pile. Um, my own compost, which I make as much of as I can every year. Uh, and let's see, what else have I added? I guess that's been about it. Different, different amounts of those things mixed in every, every year. So uh, what I'm kind of doing right now, because the soil is all bare, now that I've gotten almost all the plants out of it, um, Soil in nature, you'll find, doesn't like to be bare. If you have a bare spot in your yard, you'll probably find it grows weeds. Uh, you know, dandelions, thistles, whatever you consider a weed, which is just a plant that's growing where you don't want it. Um, because the, the soil is trying to heal itself and is not, um, and, and doesn't want to be bare. So, we're gonna help this soil not be bare. I don't want it to grow a whole bunch of things, not that it would have a chance through the winter anyway with the ground already being rock solid, but um, uh, even in the spring, I don't want other plants to start up because I have specific things I want to grow in here. This moment, um, for the next year, it's going to be garlic down here. I do kind of, people ask about, do I, do I rotate things? I do, I don't have a specific schedule, but the garlic was up in the bed on that far edge that, last year. So I moved it down to here this year and I just kind of do that through um, through the, the different beds. Anyway, um, so I'm kind of just top dressing this. I don't, there's not really any need that I've found to mix this in. I like to, if possible, avoid turning the soil up anyway because I want to uh, facilitate the earthworms and microbes and fungi and all of that stuff in the soil building large healthy networks and I don't want to disturb them. So I, I don't want to turn this in but I'm just going to put it on top here. 
very shortly it's going to be blanketed with snow that will stay. You can probably see the snow did melt again. Uh, we had, it's been getting above freezing during the, the afternoons still, even though the ground's no longer defrosting, but we're, we're headed for days where the, the highs are below freezing. So that is about to be done with all of that. So um, this isn't gonna do a whole lot through the year. Uh, through the winter because things break down very slowly when it's cold but in the spring as the snow starts to melt it's going to kind of start waking up and there's a little bit of activity through the winter just less um, the soil is going to start waking up and all of this is going to be nice and moist because it's going to be covered in snow um, and can just kind of break down into the soil itself now I'm going to also add some of my compost so let's go get that. So back here is my compost bins. These are nothing fancy. I just made them with some free pallets, which are generally pretty easy to access across most of the country. And you can see I've got two here. An ideal setup, I would have three. I just haven't taken the time to make that yet. Um, you can see how high that one is heaped up. That is this year's and it is very full right now, especially with all of the uh, leafy things left over from gardening. But this started out just like that. And look how nice and soft this is. There's still a few bigger chunks of wood and I can either pick them out or uh, put them over into that pile. But that pile will continue to shrink, even though it's not terribly active through the winter, as cold as our winters are, it, uh, it continues to break down. And by next year, it should look like nice black soil like this. Now I've got a lot of questions about how to really do composting. There is a lot of resources out there on how to make really good compost, how to make it really fast, how to make a lot, all of that kind of thing. I don't do any of that. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I just, I haven't made the time in my life to really put into doing that. All I do is make a pile inside the bin, which helps keep it piled up of anything that can break down. So what's in here is um, leaves, you know, garden scraps, weeds, uh, and pretty much just a handful of leaves. They're, they're great, but it's, again, I don't have many leaves in this area. Um, see, there's a stump of a root that's still kind of big, so we'll put him over in that pile and he could break down for another year. Uh, there always gets to be a few pine needles in here. Um, any veggie scraps from a kitchen, things like, you know, peels and ends and roots and shells and tops. Uh, the only things I don't put in here are meat products, just because you, know, you can see an avocado shell. It's not quite done breaking down as well. Um, not because they can't compost well, though there's there's definitely some controversy over that. If you've got a nice hot compost pile, it will break them down. I just have too many uh, carnivorous predators around and I don't want to um, deal with uh, the side effects of attracting any of them to the area. Again, there's a couple bigger sticks, um, but you can see what beautiful, rich black soil this is. So yeah, I just put anything basically I can break down. I'll even put, if I've got plain paper, or playing cardboard. I will put that in. Um, small twigs, eggshells, and if you don't crush them up a little bit, they take a while to break down, but they've got a lot of minerals in them. Some people actually dry them out and grind them up um, and add them as a soil amendment and so on. This is just my lazy man's way of doing compost. If it can break down, it goes in the pile. In some areas, you actually want to maybe cover your pile if you live in a very, very moist climate because it will um, kind of, if you get a ton of rain on it, it will occasionally pick up pebbles in there. That was probably from raking the winter debris out of my yard in the spring. Um, if it's really wet, you can leach all the nutrients out of it and get a really soggy pile. I have the opposite problem here. I have to bring the sprinkler over here and put it on it a few times through the summer to get it moist enough for a lot of those little microbes to actually work and do their thing uh, because the air is so dry here and we get so little rain. But if you're in a more wet area, you might 
might need to block some of the moisture instead of adding it. But that's all I do. I, I just pile things in here in no particular order because I'm using what I have when I have. And a year later, it is this beautiful, rich black material. So uh, when I get this pile a little lower, I actually move the end board here or end pallet and um, be able to access the bottom of that. I just don't want the whole thing to fall over quite yet. And this is what, there's very few gardening tools that I think are, are really necessary. And this wouldn't be necessary, it's handy to have. When you have a small garden, this is a spading fork. Um, and it's really the, one of the couple things I use other than a little trowel in hand gardening. Now, if you're doing a, a commercial sized garden or, or you know selling to farmers markets and stuff, there may be some other things that you want, but just for a, a small home garden, um, I find those two tools, in addition to some hoses and stuff like that, but as far as actual tools, uh, to be quite adequate. So let's take this over and put it on our garlic bed too. Now I'm just going to spread a layer of this on top of things too. So what I am doing here is kind of double double duty. I am protecting the the ground um, as as you would with any kind of mulch. Plus I am adding nutrients back into the soil for my next year. And I, like I said, I've used different things different years, kind of depends what I have access to. I um, tried not to and don't really budget for buying things, so I, I, I use what I, what I have access to. And basically anything that will, will break down will add nutrients back into the soil. Even like I talked about, these wood chips over here would. They just take a really long time to do it here. Um, and you could use anything in your area. The main things to be aware of, you can use straw, hay, manure, um, coffee grounds. I used to work at a restaurant. I'd bring home, I could bring home 10 gallons of coffee grounds a day. I worked at a breakfast place uh, and add that to my compost. Whatever you have, I would just uh, caution you to make sure. If you want to go back and look it up, look up uh, my video about what happens if you add hay that was uh, from grass treated with some some particularly toxic chemicals um, so you do want to know something about where it's coming from whatever your thing is if it's grass or leaves are they coming from some kind of area that's um, been treated with with toxic chemicals if you've got hay, what was put on it, you know, if you've got horse manure or any other kind of animal manure, what was the animal eating? Um, because one of those in particular, I, I don't know how it's properly pronounced, but something like um, amenolopride or amalopride, something like that, it can last for three to four years, even after it's put on a grass, eaten by an animal and pooped out. Um, it can linger and kill things in a garden. So uh, know something about <laughs> the sources where you're getting your materials or even, you know, wood shavings, wood chips from from anybody who makes wood products. Um, those can be great. If you're, if it's like a finished cabinetry shop, some of that stuff may be treated wood that you don't want. Um, so just use a little common sense and check on what all's in the stuff. But in general, anything that came out of the ground at some point can return to the ground again and that is what I am doing here. And I am uh, just feeding my soil and actually one of the next things I want to show you guys we're going to do a soil test and see how well this method has been working on actual uh, measurable numbers which I've never done before. I've just uh, continually fed it and it has fed me and it's worked great but I'm really curious so we are going to do a official soil test just to see what it's got and what it needs or what it has too much of or all that kind of thing. Um, so this is over my garlic again that I got planted. The dirt's frozen, not going to defrost again. 
this year, not till spring. And by the time the snow melts off here, those little garlic shoots, like you can see the last few years, will be already poking up through the snow, um, happy and healthy. And then I'm gonna do this over the rest of the garden beds. Fortunately, I don't have to get that all done before everything freezes because I can kind of top dress the even the frozen soil. So that's what I do to add nutrients back in. Then of course, as you know, throughout the year, especially because I live somewhere so cold and the, the cooler temperatures make it harder for plants to uptake nitrogen, even if it's available in the soil. I do use urine, a, a diluted urine, uh, as a fertilizer uh, for extra nitrogen uh, all through the year. But for now, this is gonna be all put to bed nice uh, protective layer on the soil the nutrients can leach down into there through the winter and the earthworms and microbes and funguses and all that can safely have a shelter under there to build their little networks break everything down um, and just increase the overall nutrient availability of what's in my soil which affects my food which affects my health and so on. So that's a pretty important uh, thing. Really thinks it's time to throw a stick. Okay. So that's just a look at what I do here. No need to uh, keep the camera rolling and bore you guys all to death watching me do this for 10 more beds. How many do I have? 11 more, 10 more beds, 11 beds total. Um, but that hopefully answers your questions about, you. like I said, you can get into, there's lots of great resources on making um, really great compost really fast. There's great books on soil nutrition. Um, forget the gentleman's name, but there's one called The Intelligent Gardener. I'm pretty sure I have it linked under uh, amazon.com slash shop under my favorite books section. Uh, that fellow has a whole lot of info on soil nutrition and how it works. I found it a very fascinating read. Um, the Human Ore Handbook, even if you don't want to ever use a composting toilet, has a lot of fascinating composting info in general in it. I'd recommend everyone read that. And you can get into doing a lot more fancy things if you want. But this is just my system to take all the stuff that can break down and reuse it, turn it back into more food. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.